This is a bonus episode on hormones because the study guide only covers two of five main classes of growth regulators. I'm making this video to cover the other three because they are also important. A quick recap of plant growth regulators. They're called regulators because they don't just stimulate growth, which is what hormone means. They also inhibit it. All right, so class number three is ethylene. It was first discovered in the 1800s when trees near these gas lamps were dropping their leaves. So they just worked on isolating what part of that gas was causing the leaf drop and they found it to be ethylene. This plant growth regulator ripens fruits, causes abscission or loosening so that the leaf or the fruit can fall off and haha, <laughs> it can either inhibit or promote cell expansion. First, about the fruit ripening. You can categorize fruits in two ways. Climacteric fruits are fruits where there's an increase in ethylene just before the ripening process starts. Some examples of these fruits are tomatoes, avocados, pears, and apples. The reverse of that is the non-climacteric fruits. They don't have that increase in ethylene. It's just constant and they just ripen gradually. So you can use ethylene to ripen fruits that you picked before they were ripe. And you'll see this with tomatoes, stuff like that, where it makes sense to pick it while it's still unripe. It transports better. And then when you're ready to sell, you treat it with ethylene and trigger the ripening. The other main effect is abscission. When a plant part abscises, there's a layer of cells between the plant part, like the leaf or the fruit, and the stem that it's connected to. What ethylene does is it triggers enzymes that dissolves part of the cell wall and it makes it easier to detach. The economic application of this is that you can apply ethylene to loosen fruits. So maybe in the fruit thinning stage, if you have an orchard, you can't manually thin your fruit, you can apply ethylene then. And then you can also apply it in the harvest stage and make the fruits looser and easier to pick. The fourth class of plant growth regulators is abscisic acid, or ABA. This is very tricky because I just mentioned abscission earlier. Abscisic acid has nothing to do with abscission, at least not directly. Abscisic acid is a growth inhibitor. It's higher in early seed development and it prevents premature germination. You don't want your seeds to be growing inside the fruit before it's dispersed. There's a condition called vivipary where the seeds start germinating inside. If you're a plant, you don't want that to happen because you want the fruit to move away from the main plant to get dispersed and then drop and be in the right conditions first before you start germinating. Otherwise, the seeds will probably just die. Also, under stressful conditions, the roots will produce abscisic acid Put that into the xylem and then once it gets transported up to the leaves, it closes the stomata and it helps the tree avoid water loss. The fifth and last main class of plant growth regulators are the gibberellins. They increase plant height. It was first discovered when a Japanese scientist saw that their rice seedlings were getting really spindly and falling over. It turns out there was a parasitic fungus that produced gibberellic acid, and that's what was causing this excessive growth. In addition to increasing the height of plants, it also helps to break seed dormancy. So if you treat some seeds with gibberellins, you can overcome any lighting or temperature requirements it had. It can also cause bolting which is where the plant starts to flower. You may be familiar with this if you grow lettuce and under warm temperatures, it shoots up a flower stalk and then usually your lettuce is not as good anymore. This is helpful if you produce seeds. If you produce and sell seeds, you can trigger your plants to flower early so that you can collect them. Another commercial application is for grapes. It can help make the individual fruits larger and also make the clusters looser so they're more aesthetically pleasing to the consumer. 
since plant growth and response is governed by these chemicals, it's important to know them so you know how a tree is going to respond to your management decisions like pruning or chemical application.